Hey folks, Jeff here with Mad Hatter Organics. On today's discussion topic, I'm going to be discussing the basics of grow room setup. What you're going to want, what you're going to need, and what you're really going to use. So, let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to figure out is what your grow room is going to look like. How many plants are you going to grow and are you going to grow in a tent or a full room? So let's start off with growing in tents. You can go on Amazon and pick up a 2x4 or a 4x4 Mars Hydro tent and uh, start outfitting it with uh, different sorts of lights. Um, for a 2x4, you're going to want around 300 watts, and for a 4x4, eh, let's stick between 450 and 650 watts. Uh, I know Mars Hydro also sells these lights, um, SP3000 works perfect for a 2x4, and, uh, and a FC4800 or 6500 uh, will work perfect in a 4x4. So let's talk a little bit of ventilation from these tents. Uh, Mars Hydro also sells a 4 inch exhaust fan and carbon filter combo kit. Decently priced as well and uh, it should extract all the air that you need out of that tent. Um, if you're worried about smells escaping then I would recommend getting a carbon filter. Um, Talking about exhaust fans, let's talk about environmental equipment. Uh, if you live in a dry climate, you're going to want to think about getting a humidifier uh, to bring up the RH of your, your tent to the proper levels. Uh, if you live in a climate that's super humid, and want to, uh, you'll want to grab a, a, a dehumidifier. Uh, now to properly get both of these pieces of equipment working properly with each other, uh, you'll want to grab environmental controls such as uh, Inkbird controllers. Now this company has been really good to me over the years. They've sent me all all their different types of controllers that they have, um, from their Wi-Fi, humidity, temp controllers to just their basic one plug-in. Um, uh, humidity or, or temp controller as well uh, they have they have sensors to monitor everything that's uh, Bluetooth that hooks up to a Wi-Fi gateway connector you, you name it they have the environmental um, control and and sensors that that you'll need to to grow in these in these grow tents so these controllers have the ability to to turn on and off the equipment as needed uh, to get your proper RH and temp levels in the right zone. So for temp equipment, for myself, I live in a very cold climate. Uh, as of right now, it's been minus 20 to minus 30 every day, so Celsius. Um, and I have all my stuff in the basement, which stays pretty damn cold. So. Uh, I run a small oil-fed heater inside my tent, um, tucked away in the corner, um, and I have it set for 65 Fahrenheit, so that once the lights turn off, uh, my nighttime temperatures won't drop down below 65. Uh, I, I know my room can probably get around 60, and uh, so I don't really like to go past that 65 mark. Uh, but with my lights on, my tent stays at a constant 75 to 78 Fahrenheit, uh, so I'm, I don't have to worry about heating during that 12 hour light on period. So so this will save uh, lots on energy costs, only having to running at night. Um, so with those major things out of the way, let's get into smaller things that you'll want for your tent. Uh, Clip-on fans, wall-mounted fans, um, there's a company out there that we all know who've had some horrible luck with their clip-on fans and uh, house fires. Uh, I'm not going to mention who, but we all know who they are. Uh, to my knowledge, they were the only real company out there that had these clip-on tent pole fans that oscillated. 
Um, until recently, AC Infinity released their version, and it looks so much better. Uh, I'll probably be purchasing at least two for the 5x5, one for the 2x4, and maybe just one for a backup plan. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but uh, I'm excited to get my hands on those for sure. Uh, this will be a game changer for the home grow community, and uh, and yeah, it can't wait to get my hands on them for sure. Um, if you want to go the wall mounted way, there's lots of DIY options out there too uh, to mount them to the inside of your tent, either using two by fours, uh, zip ties. Uh, yeah, like I said, lots of DIY options out there. Now with the the basics of, of single tent uh, single tent growing done, let's get into talking about what you'll need to grow for perpetual setups. You're gonna want a small area for um, a seedling setup, uh, whether it be in a in a tray with a humidity dome or in a small little tent like I have for my uh, desktop. Uh, if it's in a cold climate like myself, uh, I use a seedling heat mat. Uh, it's super beneficial to keep everything warm um, and to get those seedlings started for sure. Uh, you're gonna want a veg tent. Um, I use Mars Hydro 2x4 tent with an SP3000 for this. Uh, I let my veg plants or sorry, I let my plants veg out for a month in this tent uh, and then move them over to my 5x5 flower tent. Now, to control the light cycles of these tents, uh, you're going to want to get a couple of light timers. These allow you to control the times of your lights uh, on and off periods. Uh, your veg tent, you can control the lights to be on for 18 hours and off for 6 hours. And of course, your flower tent will be 12 hours on and 12 hours off. Um, I recommend getting a battery backup digital timer. If your power ever goes out, uh, it'll save the time it's set for and won't really mess around with the light cycles. It'll just basically take out that period that your lights or your electricity was turned off for. Uh, so it won't mess with say if you have it scheduled to come on at 10 o'clock in the morning and 10 o'clock at night it'll be set for that forever until you take that battery out and reset things so getting into the media and pot sizes um you're gonna want to figure out how you're gonna grow uh what media you're gonna use what size pots you're gonna use um are you gonna grow organically uh if you are i recommend getting 10 gallon pots um, or even beds uh, if you're gonna grow in cocoa or a soilless mixture uh, using salt media or salt uh, nutrients uh, three to five gallon pots will work perfectly for you and uh, are you gonna want to use plastic or fabric pots uh, or are you gonna want to grow hydroponically these are kind of all the options that you're gonna to want to figure out with lots of research and chatting with people that use these uh, there's there's tons of tons of people out there that are that are 100 willing to help and and be out there be there talking to you one on one uh, all over Instagram uh, yeah every pretty much everywhere YouTube YouTube's a great platform that for that as well. Um, so one last thing about uh, grow room basics uh, and if you're going to be growing in a sealed room uh, you're going to want to look into some sort of co2 supplementation now i'm not familiar with adding co2 other than using a couple of these uh, mushroom bags uh, a couple of times i'm not entirely sure if i noticed a huge difference or not inside my tents but i it was 40 bucks so i gave it a whirl but uh but with all that being said, guys, I hope you guys pulled some sort of information out of this. Uh, whether you're new or you're, uh, you've are you been growing for a few years, uh, anything would really help, I guess. But uh, but yeah, uh, I appreciate every single one of you guys, and, and keep watching. Um, I, I'm going to be pumping out the content as much as possible now. Uh, 
at least two times a week. I'm gonna try sometimes for the third video, but we'll see how my schedule works out. But uh, like I said, I do appreciate every single one of you guys, and thank you. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, comment below on what you use in your grow room setup, and uh, and hit that like button. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time.